cleaving in my mind as if my brain had split. I tried to match it seam by seam, but could not make it fit. The thought behind, I strove to join unto the thought before. But sequence raveled out of sound, like balls upon a floor. Men have called me mad. But the question is not yet settled whether madness is or is not the loftiest intelligence, whether much that is glorious, whether all that is profound does not spring from disease of thought. Dearest, I feel certain that I'm going mad again. I feel we cannot go through another one of those terrible times, and I shan't recover this time. I begin to hear voices, and I can't concentrate. So I'm doing what seems the best thing to do. But when the melancholy fit shall fall, sudden from heaven like a weeping cloud, that fosters the droop-headed flowers all, and hides the green hill in an April shroud, and glut thy sorrow on a morning rose, or on the rainbow of the salt sand wave, or on the wealth of globed peonies. I felt a funeral in my brain, and mourners to and fro kept treading, treading till it seemed that sense was breaking through. And when they all were seated, a service like a drum kept beating, beating till I thought my mind was going numb. Yet there are moments when the walls of the mind grow thin. And then I heard them lift a box and creak across my soul with those same boots of lead again. Then space began to toll. I became insane. My mind has been the most discontented. Restless one. With long intervals of horrible sanity. As all the heavens were a bell, and being but an ear, all extremes of happiness are allied with madness. Between hope and despair. Pardon my sanity. Better rain. Nothing thicker than a knife's blade. In a world insane. I can't concentrate. My mind. Absolutely. I could tell no one. Concentrate. Ah. Darkness. Madness is terrific, I can assure you, not to be sniffed at. And in its lava, I still find most of the things I write about. It shoots out of one everything shaped, final, not in mere driblets as sanity does. How sad is it when a luxurious imagination is obliged in self-defense to deaden its delicacy and vulgarity, and riot in things attainable, that it may not have leisure to go mad after things which are not. Insanity to the sane seems so unnecessary, but I am only one, and they are four and forty. I'm pleasantly located in the deep sea but love will row you out if her hands are strong. And don't wait till I land, for I'm going ashore on the other side. Science has not yet taught us if madness is or is not the sublimity of the intelligence. <laughs>